welcome to Down the Forest Path podcast. Today we are continuing in our exploration of the elements and we'll take a look at the element of fire. We humans have such a fascination with fire. Perhaps it's because it's both life-sustaining and destructive at the same time. Um, We see our own lives reflected in the flames. We're drawn to it like moths to a flame. Our ancestors are still with us, showing us the importance of fire. It's, it's in our blood, it's in our bones. Fire is the birth of technology for our ancestors. Learning to work with fire brought us better tools, warmth, and light in the darkness. And we still feel that kinship with our ancestors when we gather around a fire with the hypnotic flames, enticing us to look deeper into ourselves and the world. And there's a mysticism associated with fire, which has been shown in ancient fire temples and rituals all around the world. So, magically speaking, fire is masculine in nature and is probably the most potent symbol of transformation that there is. It's the heat of a roaring fire, and it's the gentleness of a candle burning in the night. It's our hearth fires and our central heating. It provides us with what we need to cook our food. It is the sun that brings life and warmth to the land. We depend on fire for survival, but we also know the destructive powers of fire. Fire is the distant the distant stars in the night sky. It's volcanoes and the magma deep within the earth. The south is where we find the element of fire, the warrior at the height of their ability and maturity. It's associated with passion and love, sex and pleasure. It's the power of manifesting. It is the doing and not the thinking. It's also the time of the fiery noonday sun at its nadir, and the season is summer. Its colors are red and orange. In spellcraft, we work with fire in candle magic, burning items or petitions, as well as working with the solar tides. Fire can be used for courage and protection, for increasing energy and strengthening the will. Fire is power. We can make a need fire, which is a fire made from nine magical woods. We can scry in the flames of a candle or a fire to gain insight into a situation. We can offer up herbs and incense to the gods, allowing the smoke to take our prayers to deity. Fire is connected with the tarot suit of wands, but many see this element as connected to swords, being as the sword is forged in the fire, or the ritual tool of the athame. The reason for this association with swords and the element of air we discussed in our last video, where Waite, from the Smith Rider Waite tarot deck, switched the wands and swords associations in order to keep his vows of secrecy to the Golden Dawn. I personally prefer swords corresponding to fire, but if you work with the tarot, you may prefer to work with the element of air in connection to swords. That is purely your choice and your preference. Magical creatures associated with fire are dragons and salamanders. Other animals such as lizards and snakes, scorpions, and other desert creatures are also associated with fire. Um, The fox, the stag, and the mare are also sometimes associated with the element of fire. Finally, some herbal correspondences associated with the element of fire include alexanders, cedar, coriander, chili, cinnamon, clove and clover, dragon's blood, fennel, heather, holly, juniper, mandrake, mustard, nettle, rosemary, thyme, St. John's wort, and sunflower. I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast 
and um, we will be continuing uh, with the element with our series on the elements and we will be exploring the element of water in our next podcast so I hope that you will join us and um, thank you for listening take care <laughs>